This video is sponsored by the online military vehicle game War Thunder. Constant Peg By the mid-1970s, both the United States Air Force and the United States Navy suffered significant casualties in North Vietnam, particularly in terms of fighter pilots. The enemy's Soviet-made MiG-17 aircraft and their pilots appeared to have the edge against the American F-4s, and their use of air-to-air -air and surface-to-air missiles made the skies even more treacherous. The standard air-to-air -air training received by F-4 crews at the time consisted of around 10 flights only. It was determined that drastic losses of American fighter pilots resulted from a lack of training in the art of the dogfight, and that a top-secret training division of the U.S. Air Force should be created. Born in 1977 and dubbed Project Constant Peg, as an ode to Peggy, the wife of a high-ranking official, the new specialized training program sought to bolster the tactical performance of new and existing Air Force squadrons. To accommodate the training exercises, a secret airfield was constructed in a remote location in the Nevada desert, and to get hold of the necessary MiG aircraft for training, the Air Force pulled out all the stops. MiGs were reclaimed from scrapyards, bought from collectors in foreign military organizations, and even dug out of locations where they had crashed and become buried. With constant peg in motion, training could finally begin. This happened primarily through simulated dogfights, in which American pilots would fly the MiGs using Soviet tactics, mimicking the enemy's techniques, thereby allowing for careful study and the development of effective countermaneuvers. The squadron whose job it was to learn to fly the MiGs in the manner of the Soviets were nicknamed the Red Eagles, and formerly known as the USAF 4477th Test and Evaluation Squadron. The Red Eagles, who had been selected from top flight schools around the U.S., were tasked with preparing their fellow U.S. pilots for the realities of dogfights with Soviet aircraft, including the MiG-17, MiG-21, and MiG-23. Rigorously working to analyze and improve the dogfighting techniques of U.S. pilots paid off, as was reflected in the success of the Air Force against the Soviet-made fleet of the Iraqi Air Force in Operation Desert Storm. Their work complete, Project Constant Peg and the 4477th Squadron were formally decommissioned in 1990, yet they stayed shrouded in secrecy until their 2006 declassification. To this day, Constant Peg remains the longest continuously classified aircraft program in the history of the United States military. Just like the pilots of the 4477th Test Group, you too can fight with some of history's most incredible aircraft in War Thunder one of the most comprehensive and detailed vehicle combat games ever made. I love to test my skills in dogfights, featuring aircraft used in the secret constant peg program like the F-4 Phantom and MiG-17. Use the link on the screen and in the video description to support Dark 5 and play War Thunder now on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox. Every vehicle is highly detailed and modeled down to its individual components, offering a highly immersive combat experience. The full collection of vehicles in War Thunder spans over a hundred years of history, from the 1920s to today. Jump into dynamic, combined arms PvP battles with more than 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters, and ships at your disposal. For aircraft lovers like me, no extra hardware is necessary. Fly any aircraft using nothing more than a mouse and keyboard, thanks to the game's intuitive mouse aim mode. Support Dark 5 by registering using the link on screen and in the description to earn a free large bonus pack, including multiple premium vehicles, premium accounts, boosters, and more. Wild Weasels One of the most challenging objectives faced by any combat flight is in targeting and destroying anti-aircraft installations, including radar systems and surface-to-air missile launching facilities. Using aircraft for locating and attacking a structure which is specifically designed to defend against air attacks involves one pilot baiting the enemy to fire, thereby revealing its position so that the rest of the squadron can target it for destruction. Initially developed during the Vietnam War, the division tasked with these dangerous missions was known as the 354th Tactical Fighter Squadron. 
This type of military tactic is every bit as dangerous as it sounds, and as such, these aircraft and their pilots were codenamed Wild Weasels. Their slogan, as depicted on their emblem, was appropriately, You gotta be shitting me. The Weasels played a vital role in the execution of such pivotal military maneuvers as Operation Rolling Thunder and Operation Ivory Coast. Ivory Coast was a U.S. Special Operations mission which sought to rescue U.S. prisoners of war from the Sun Tai prison camp compound in North Vietnam, where 61 American inmates were believed to be held. Five of the 116 aircraft involved in the mission belonged to the Wild Weasel's 3rd Squadron, who had been tasked with the suppression of surface-to-air missile systems. The first stage of Operation Ivory Coast, which had been in planning and development for many months, was the deployment of 56 U.S. Special Forces soldiers at the prison camp. The mission was initially successful, with only two aircraft being lost and two soldiers being wounded. However, having seized control of the camp, it was found to contain no prisoners. The Americans who were supposed to be rescued had previously been moved to another camp just a few miles away. Despite being considered a tactical success, the military and Nixon's government were heavily criticized for not possessing sufficient intelligence regarding the true location of the prisoners. Nevertheless, the unquestionable bravery and tactical skill of the wild weasels has become the stuff of military legend. Janet Eyre From a private terminal at Las Vegas' Harry Reid International Airport operates one of the most secretive aeronautical organizations in the world. Janet is a top-secret government-run airline whose secrets are so closely guarded that very little is known about it or its fleet of Boeing 737 airliners, other than that they are generally unmarked, with the exception of a single red stripe. Even the true name of the organization is a matter of dispute. It is rumored that the fleet's call sign, Janet, may either stand for Just Another Non-Existent Terminal or Joint Air Network for Employee Transportation. The latter of these two namesakes seems more likely, given that the primary purpose of Janet Air is to deliver government employees to special access facilities, primarily Area 51 and Tonopa Test Range in the Nevada Desert. Close observation of these planes reveals patterns in their behavior. They depart and return every day without fail, and frequently enter some of the most closely protected airspace in the USA. Aviation enthusiasts have attempted to monitor these movements and discovered that soon after takeoff, the planes turn off their transponders, preventing their journey from being tracked. They even request a change of radio frequency from Nellis Control, the organization which oversees Nevada airspace. Despite these attempts to reveal more about Janet Air, the organization remains cloaked in mystery. What little details are known include that a job advert was posted by an associated company who were seeking Las Vegas-based flight attendants and that the prospective employees would be subject to a thorough background check. It is also known that one of the six or so Boeing 737s which comprised the Janet fleet was lost on March 16, 2004, when the pilot suffered sudden cardiac arrest and the plane crashed at its destination, the infamous Tonopah test range, where top-secret weapons are stored and aeronautical research takes place. The crash tragically killed the pilot, as well as four government employee passengers. 427th Special Operations Squadron As a covert and specialized division of the United States Air Force, the 427th Squadron's business is generally kept under wraps. However, when a reporter filed a Freedom of Information request regarding the 427th, the Air Force responded that the unit is responsible for, quote, supporting training requirements for infiltration and exfiltration. This somewhat cryptic description of the unit's purpose has been interpreted as meaning that the primary goal of the 427th Squadron is to train and prepare military personnel for covertly entering and exiting dangerous territory, especially when time is of the essence. The 427th is believed to support various branches of the U.S. military and even to serve the CIA. 
History reveals that the 427th has had a wide range of roles since its conception during the Second World War, including as a night-flying fighter squadron and as a key component in anti-terrorism operations. It flew against the Nazis in its early days and contributed to the Vietnam War decades later. Investigations made by the media, as well as individuals, reveals that the 427th Squadron flies a wide range of different aircraft, including some which aren't typically used in the U.S., such as a single-engine Cessna Caravan and a twin-engine Casa Aviocar. The suspicion is that this form of training prepares troops for dealing with types of aircraft which are more commonly encountered in less developed countries. Other aircraft belonging to the 427th includes a number of Cessna and medium-sized transport aircraft, all of which blend in with civilian aircraft. Due to their specialization in short landings and takeoffs, the 427th Squadron is likely used to insert special forces troops into sensitive areas during important operations, particularly those in countries where rugged landscapes limit the amount of runway space available. Despite there being a wealth of speculation and anecdotal evidence for the sort of missions flown by the 427th Squadron, specifics are unknown and are likely to stay that way. Project Corona Until the 1995 declassification of their work related to Project Corona, specific details regarding the 6,593rd Test Squadron were sparse, despite the fact that their mission involved some of the most logistically complex operations in the history of the U.S. Air Force. Run by the CIA, the Corona program was the first of its kind. It involved photographic surveillance of the USSR and China from satellites in orbit between June 1959 and May 1972. As a top-secret reconnaissance program, very few people were aware of Corona, and even many of those who worked on it were told only as much as they needed to know. Photographs were to be taken by the satellites in orbit, where they could not be detected or jammed by Soviet technologies. The Corona satellites, fitted with uber-powerful cameras and lenses, represented a technological breakthrough in the domain of reconnaissance and intelligence gathering. However, it would be necessary to retrieve the photographic film physically, in such a way that it could not fall into the hands of the enemy. This immense and dangerous responsibility was that of the 6,593rd Test Squadron. Tasked with the development and refinement of aerial capsule recovery, the squadron got to work on developing a suitable aircraft based on a modified Hercules plane. Various methods of catching the capsule were explored, including a simple rope and hook system to snag the falling prize. On August 19, 1960, the 6,593rd Test Squadron made the first successful recovery flight, securely delivering a capsule known as Discoverer 14 to home ground. This incredible feat was not only the first recovery of any object placed into orbit by a human, but the Discoverer 14 capsule contained the very first images of the Earth's surface taken from space. Historians tend to agree that the significance of the missions flown by the 6,593rd Test Squadron cannot be overstated, and that they may well be responsible for altering the course of the Cold War. If you love military history and vehicles, jump into the PvP action of War Thunder and support Dark Five by registering using the link on screen and in the description. Be sure to use the link to earn a large free bonus pack created for Dark Five fans, including multiple premium vehicles, premium accounts, boosters, and more.